Hey guys, welcome back to me watching the movie. I am Mike and this is the first ever episode of Daily Horror News, which is a lie. It's not going to be every day because I don't have time for that. If you guys want more of these, make sure you click subscribe using one finger, click the bell using the second finger, and we're going to go for three fingers right now. And that means click like on the video because that really helps and you should be ashamed of yourself. Three fingers? Really? Three? on the first time. You know what? Stranger Things season five production has begun. This got delayed from all the SAG after strikes and the writer strikes and all that stuff, but they are officially back at it today. Looks like it's gonna come out around late 2025, maybe probably early 2026. My only question is you have all that money and you guys are sitting on the floor. That dude's sitting on the fucking floor. That guy's playing Galaga. I know that the dude in the bottom right corner's ass is already hurting. He's very, very not happy. That guy thinks Zionism is sexy. By the way, if you don't know, that's a big thing going on. If you look at any of these news stories in the comments, there's a bunch of people like, nope, boycotting it, not doing it, because Noah Snap said that Zionism was sexy. It was in a video where it said that and was laughing about it. I don't know. It's kind of the opposite of the Miss Melissa Barrera situation. What do you guys think about Stranger Things Season 5 right now? Are you worn out on Stranger Things? Did they fly too close to the sun? Are you a little just not as excited about it as you were? Or are you actually pissed about something like that and are not going to watch it? Let me know in the comments down below. I don't think I finished watching season four. In the next bit of news that makes me want to yeet my fucking body into a hot pit of lava, the Night Swim director says that they have ideas for more Night Swim movies. Oh, good. I want those. No, I don't. Fuck. Bryce McGuire told Entertainment Weekly that, look, if there was to be a sequel, I do have, I do have an idea. And there's lots more of the mythology. I just wanted this first one to be so simple and archetypal. Archetypical. Crane. There's lots more that has already been discussed and could have been in the movie that I would love to get to explore if people want more. None of it made sense in the first fucking movie, dude. You just had a bunch of, you know, I'm not going to spoil it for anybody who wants to have the sensation of sticking something sharp inside of their rectum. That's to be expected. The movie already made its budget back, I do believe. So, you know, Blumhouse and they're probably going to, hey, maybe it's one of those situations like Annabelle 2, where the sequel's way better than the original movie. <laughs> Anything could happen. Anything could happen. Maybe they're, fuck me. Jacob Elordi, who is a person I'm not familiar with at all personally, but is sure is handsome, is set to play Frankenstein, the Frankenstein monster, in Guillermo del Toro's adaptation for Netflix, which, by the way, I didn't know much about this, but I looked into it. This cast is fucking nuts. Jacob Elordi, Christoph Walks, Felix Kramer, Lars Mikkelsen, David Brown. Okay, I don't, I don't know who half those people are, but Christoph Waltz, man. And also, Oscar Isaac's going to play Victor Frankenstein, and Mia Goth is going to be in the movie as well. It was supposed to star Andrew Garfield, but this uh, the because of the SAG writer strikes once again, fucking up everybody's schedules. Right on, though. Fuck the man. I'm glad you guys got that shit figured out and are going to get paid what you're worth for sure. And I know what you're thinking. It's not one of those like presents by Guillermo thing. He's actually writing and directing this. So that's fascinating. I look forward to see what that's like. Even though personally, I feel like a lot of Guillermo's projects are overrated. You didn't hear me say that. That was the devil that's possessed my ass. David Sandberg told Collider that he's coming back to horror, which is awesome. Lights Out kicked ass. They should have made a sequel, but they didn't get around to it in time, so now it's kind of dead. He did Annabelle Creation, which we just talked about. It's better than the original Annabelle. He's a really good horror director, and that Lights Out original short was really scary, too. It's really cool to see what happened with him coming up, making horror shorts, and ends up now he's done the last two Shazam movies, which those are, you know, that's not my cup of tea. But he does say he's coming back to horror, and he's probably thankful as fuck to be doing so after that last one. But he told Collider, as far as taking more of his horror shorts, and turning them into feature projects. He says, we're working on that actually. That's on the way. I can't say which short films it's based on, but it's actually two. I'm definitely gonna be doing horror next. I'm very eager to get back to that because it feels like I have so much more to do. I have so much more horror in me. I was just getting started with Annabelle Creation and then I took a superhero detour. Welcome fucking back, pal. We're excited to have you back, Andy, Ryan, fucking what's David? But hey, for those of you who enjoy the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, they are definitely in no surprise. <laughs> Does Blumhouse like money? Yes. <laughs> to no one's fucking surprise, Blumhouse enjoys money and money enjoys Blumhouse. Of course they're doing this. Josh Hutcherson does confirm that Five Nights at Freddy's is coming back again. We all knew it would. We'd be shocked if it didn't. He said, I know they're in the process right now of nailing down the story and they want to get it going as soon as possible. Obviously the fans are amazing and die hard. For me to be a part of it was so cool and so phenomenal and just phenomenal. He didn't say so phenomenal. That would have been kind of a douchey thing to say. But anyways, uh, yeah. You gotta get Matthew Lillard back. Them's the rules. Paul Giamatti at the Oscar Globe 
darkness. By the way, that Joe, Joe Coy thing, thing, that was really hard to watch. The guy that they got to do, the Brashard Globes, the Golden Globe Nuts, the Nuts of the Globe Sacks, Corn Globe Nutters. Fuck my ass with a fork. The Golden Globes, the guy that got to do Joe Coy was absolutely atrocious. It was flamed out hard. It's so cringy and hard to watch. Taylor Swift got mad at him. Harrison Ford's mad at everyone all the time. But like, yeah, it was woof hard to watch and the worst part is the guy just doubled down he was like hey screw you guys the jokes i wrote are the ones you laughed at somebody else wrote the other bad jokes it's like dude you knew what you were doing when you stepped on that fucking stage the time to talk shit about the stuff that the writers wrote for you was in private to them before you stepped your ass on stage you're the one that fucked up that was a huge dick move i will not support that guy going forward he seems like a taint but on the red globe carpet, whatever it's called for the globes, is it always a red carpet? I don't fucking know. On that fancy carpet, Paul Giamatti said that the one franchise he wants to work in more than any, any other is more horror movies. And he said his favorite movie is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And they asked what role he would play in it, and he said, I don't know, but imagine this, you guys. By the way, where the fuck is the sequel to the 2022 Tex Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie produced by Fede Alvarez? Where the fuck is that at? They hinted at a prequel. We haven't got shit. I thought that movie kicked ass. I enjoyed it a lot. But anyways, yeah, Paul Giamatti in a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. He wants to do it. Someone has to make that fucking, I don't care if you don't even have a script. You get your ass out there and you find that fucking dog. You go find a script to put Tex Paul Giamatti in a goddamn Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie because that's beautiful. I I'm sure you can find something for the dude. I mean, he played a fucking rhino in Spider-Man. And my friends, that is the first version of, what was this show called again? We'll talk to you guys super soon, and don't forget, come talk about all this and whatever else happens the rest of the week with us Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. Make sure you have the bell fucking clicked, or I'll come over your house and I'll stick one to two fingers in you. Here comes that white-faced fucker, an asshole like no other. He's a big old piece of shit, wants to stab your sister's tits cause he's a white-faced fucker. Loomis can't recover, Dr. Challenge drunk again, sleeping with your sister's friends. Do you want to know about the darkness? I said God damn. God damn you fire. Halloween never ends, suck my fucking dick, and I don't really care what Blumhouse fucking says. Put him in a box, or suck a fucking cock. You can say he's dead, but we all know he's not. Yeah. So let's go trick or treating, let's go fucking drinking, let's all go in pumpkin head on VHS.